Now, one of the things that iNav has been able to do for a very long time is for you to upload a set of waypoints or GPS coordinates along with height and other things into your iNav model and get it to fly autonomously. And I'm going to do one of these videos about specifically for Multirotus, so we'll use this thing here. This is actually the quad that I built in my quadcopter building for beginners series. I've put iNav on it. It's also on the bottom here. I've got an optical flow and even a rangefinder too. This has kind of become my little test platform for stuff like this. It's been incredibly handy. I'll put links down below if you want to go and have a look at how I've actually built it. But now I've got this here and we're into iNav 7.1. Then it's an opportunity for me to revisit a video that I did a very long time ago, showing you how to set up those autonomous missions, load them into the multi-rotor and take it for a fly. Again, this is available with both multi-rotors, but also with things like, well, anything that iNav can do, really. So planes, wings, even boats and cars. But there have been a couple of improvements and changes to the way that this all works since the last time I did it many years ago. So I thought it would be useful to catch it up. So first of all, what is a mission? Well, a mission is just a set of positions on a map that you can create that then you can save onto the flight controller that can be then reloaded and then you can select a very specific flight mode called nav wp or nav waypoints and then the craft will fly to each of those waypoints in turn it used to be very basic now there's lots of extra cute things you can do like have points of interest so the quad rather than just fly from point to point will actually fly from point to point while looking at that point of interest you can get it to kind of hover at a point of interest for a specific amount of time you can get it to repeat parts of it you can even get it at the end of the whole thing to fly back to you and to land and that's what i'm going to do is just show you the basics in today's video now you can have something called multi-missions where you can upload multiple missions into your model and then select them at the field i'm not going to talk about that in this video but i will put a link below to the video that explains all about that but the big tip with this is that if you are interested in doing this trying it only play with missions once you have the gps set up on your model properly and the compass if it's a multi-rotor for iNav so it'll do things like the position hold and also return to home now i did a video where i actually set up iNav on this i would make sure that you can do all of those things and it does them flawlessly because the ability to have a solid gps location and also a compass on things like a multi-rotor are essential for you to be able to fly missions safely and for them to work. So don't try missions until those basic things work really well. So in this video, I'm going to put a couple of time codes down below. First of all, let me go through some of the basics, how it all works. You don't have to be connected to a quad for that. You can kind of play with iNav Configurator and just have a goof around. Then we'll load it onto this multi-rotor and then finally take it to the field and I'll show you what it does. So one of the really nice things about mission planning here in iNav is it's something you can do without the flight controller plugged in. I'm not currently connected to a flight controller, but it's one of the few options I have here down the left-hand side. So I'm going to hit mission control and it's going to bring up the basic screen. Now this is just the map. We can zoom in and out to wherever we want and wherever we're going to be flying so that we can load the mission. I'm just going to try and choose somewhere that's pretty far away from most places. Again, this isn't where we're going to fly but it's a great opportunity to use as an example a couple of options here on the left hand side we have the options to load and save the mission when we're connected to a computer we'll have the options to save it into the flight controller's memory and also save it to eat from so we can save it for a later day and then we also have the options to delete it everything else is hidden underneath these three icons the settings multi-missions and the elevation before you start creating any waypoints, and let's just delete that one, let's create the defaults. The defaults are going to give you your altitude in centimeters. So 5,000 is gonna be 50 meters. The speed in centimeters per second that you want your multi-rotors to fly at, that again can be changed weight point to waypoint. So maybe you want to get to a certain point very quickly, but then to very gently fly from one way point to another we can change it in here i'm going to leave it at zero that's going to use the defaults that set generically then we're going to have the radius this is setting meters this is how far around a waypoint the 
model has to get within in order to consider that waypoint visited. Uh, 50 meters is pretty big. I think for a little quadcopter, I would probably drop that down to something like 10 or even lower if it's a relatively small area it's going to be calm weather the multi-rotor can get pretty close in and then we have the two things for fixed wing the approach altitude and the land altitude because we've got a multi-rotor we don't need to worry about those right now so let's save those things and close that out let's go into the multi-mission stuff multi-missions allows you to save more than one mission onto the flight controller at once and allows you then to select which one you want to fly so maybe you want to have a mission over here then the next battery you want to fly a mission here next battery you want to fly a mission here you can create and save all of those and then choose them at the field I have a video about multi-missions I'll link you to it below I'm not going to cover it in this introductory video Last one then is elevation. And we're going to come back to this because this is actually a very cool thing in order to try and avoid flying into something. Now I'm going to pretend that I'm stood here at the end of this particular lane and this is where I'm gonna fly from. So let's click on here using the left button on the mouse and create some waypoints. And each of those will inherit the defaults that we've just set up. I'm gonna get maybe do that. So each of these waypoints have a number of parameters. So if I click on the last one, here we have the waypoint, the different waypoint types. We can have a position hold time so we can get the multi-rotor to sit at that location for a certain period of time. We can create a point of interest. We're going to do that in a moment, or we can set it to land. Again, we have the height here, 50 meters. So it's going to be 50 meters for all of them. And we can also use sea level reference for that if we really want to. Elevation in meters, we'll look at that in a moment, but we can see that it's quite hilly around here already. Again, we can change the speed for individual waypoints, leaving it at zero, we'll just use the defaults. And the last thing, we can apply an extra modifier, either jump, set heading, or return to home. So I would set it for return to home, so it's gonna come back to me if I'm stood roughly here. So that's a very, very basic mission, fab. Now, the other thing that we can do is we can click on the elevation tab. And that allows me, if I click on here, I can actually drag that to roughly where I'm going to be stood if I was going to be flying this mission. And if I scroll down, we have the elevation profile. So this gives a rough idea of how tall everything is around and how much of a gap we've, we've got between everything. Now, at the moment, we don't look bad. However, it looks like as we fly over here, this is getting a little bit close. I might want a little bit more uh, headroom between that. So the elevation is about 40 meters. I might want to change that. So what I might do is click on the line here to add another waypoint, go into that waypoint, and I'm going to increase the altitude a little bit. And that should now mean that we're going to rise a little bit and that just keeps me from flying into anything. And over here, five and six, let's get rid of waypoint seven, click that accidentally. Five and six, we could actually reduce the height a little bit. And again, this is just how we do it. It's really simple and easy. And then maybe go to a little lower, maybe. There we go. So that's what the height is going to do and we can see we're pretty safe all the way around again just be a little bit careful you know this is a guesstimate of how high everything is you know if there are certain large trees or something uh, do also keep an eye when you're doing this you know it looks like there are some high tension wires around here we definitely don't want to be going too near them so maybe i'll drag that waypoint a little bit further away from them just for safety now, what's going to happen is when I take off from the home location, it's going to fly to waypoint one and then waypoint two, three, four. And it's going to point at each waypoint. So it's going to fly along here, point to waypoint four. As it hits waypoint four, it's going to turn to the right. And then it's going to fly to waypoint five, waypoint six. And then it's going to fly back to that home location. Now, what about if there's something that we really want to have a look at? Maybe we actually want to have a really nice view of all the different sides of this wooded area. So what we can do is we can kind of drag the mission 
around the boundary like that and that would kind of work wouldn't it and rather than it pointing at next waypoint what we actually want is it to point here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click and create a new waypoint. So we want it to fly just straight to waypoint one. When it gets to waypoint one, we want the quadcopter to be pointing here and then to go around this part of the mission while still pointing at this wooded area. So I'm going to create a new waypoint. I'm going to drag it into the middle and I'm going to then edit the waypoint by clicking on it and make it a point of interest. Now you notice this line has gone yellow. That's because what happens is the multi-rotor is going to take off, fly to here. As soon as it gets to here, it's going to point to that point of interest and continue to point to POI2 as it flies down here, 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 here. So maybe we only want it until waypoint 6. If we click on waypoint 6, we can say, don't bother doing that anymore. We can say... Set heading, leave it at zero, make sure it's set to zero. And then what happens, you'll notice it goes back to a blue line. And that means that you can actually fly from here to point one. It's going to fly each of these legs while looking at this point of interest. It gives a lovely view around each side of this particular wooded area. When it gets to waypoint six, it's going to stop looking at the point of interest because we've just told it to set heading, which essentially turns that off. And then it's going to fly looking directly back. And when it gets to waypoint seven, waypoint seven has that return to home feature. So that is then going to fly and land as it would normally. So we can save this onto the computer to play with later, but let's plug in a flight controller and load a mission onto it, ready to take the field to fly. So let's connect to a flight controller and have a look at what's changed from when we're looking at it here, when we're not connected to when we are. So let's connect to this flight controller, go into the mission control tab, and here in the mission control tab, you see we've got lots of additional icons. This is not only to load and save from a file, but also to save to the memory of the flight controller and then to the EEPROM. Thing we'll look at here is a couple of things. Well, the distance in meters, that's going to tell you the overall distance. You need to make sure that the craft is capable of doing that. How many points that you've used, 120 is available on this flight controller I have here, and whether or not the mission is valid, that needs to be green. So let's create a quick mission, just like we did before. Maybe we're going to fly something like that. That is going to be the mission. We can see that the distance is 1.66 kilometers, so just over a mile. Now, we could save that to a file, but the next thing to do is to save it into the memory of the flight controller. The memory is going to be wiped when we unplug it, but it's just a great thing to do. Because if we now say, save the mission to flight controller, you'll see here that at the bottom, it says that the mission is valid. That means that we are good. However, now to save it to the EEPROM, that's going to save it to the memory of the flight controller that's going to be persistent when we unplug it. So that means we can now unplug it, go to the field and fly it. Things that I would do at the end of this to check that that is all safe, I'd save it to a file just for reference so that you always got it. But the way I check that this is actually saved successfully, I'm going to delete all the points, say OK. I'm going to then load it from the EEPROM, which is what the flight controller is going to do when we fly the mission. And there it is, it's come back. So now we know that this mission is safely on the flight controller. There's only one last thing that we just need to triple check. That is going into the modes tab. You need to make sure that one of the modes is nav waypoint. That's the mode that's going to cause the flight controller to fly to each of those waypoints that we've just saved in turn. So make sure that this is saved. Be aware, I'm going to talk about this in a moment, you cannot on the model in one of the nav modes, these navigation modes, any of these, position, hold, return to home. At the moment, the way it works is don't arm in any of these. Arm in something like Horizon, and then when you're hovering, then flick it into nav waypoint, and it's gonna fly those waypoints that we've just saved. So in terms of flying the mission at the field, once the model is set, I need to load the mission into memory. There's only one in here. So I'm going to hold the stick to the top right hand corner. That's going to load the mission into the memory of the flight controller and it's ready to go. We could have set it so that that's loaded automatically when the multi-rotor boots up with this 
parameter on the screen. I don't like to do that. I like to choose when I'm going to fly a mission. With that set, flying in angle mode, I'm going to flick it into nav waypoints and away it goes. And it's going to fly at the speed that's set by this parameter here on the screen. And by default, it's only going to be seven or eight miles an hour. I'd personally increase that. About 10 miles an hour is about 450 centimeters a second. So I would personally set nav auto speed to something like 500 or 600 centimeters a second so that it gets around them relatively quickly. As you can see here, the quad is getting to the first waypoint. It's now going to go from this waypoint to the next one, pointing at that point of interest. And it is going to continue around all these every single time, continuing to point the nose at the point of interest. Again, it's looking a little bit jerky because I've speeded this up just so you can get an idea of what is going on. But again, be really careful with this. Make sure that you are well above any obstacles. This is all done autonomously. I'm not touching any of the sticks. It's doing it all itself. Now it's coming down the last leg here, pointing at the point of interest. When it gets to the end, that's where I've told it as a return to home is needed. So it's going to flick around, point back to me and come back home and land where I'm stood. And it's that easy. So there you go, that's how you do all the autonomous missions and autonomous flying stuff. Now there are only a few gotchas with this. First of all is do not try this until you can do nav position hold and the return to home works solid every single time. All of the mission stuff is predicated on those sensors being calibrated and working perfectly. So don't try missions until you can do that stuff and it just works flawlessly. Other common gotcha that I tend to see is people trying too much with their first mission, literally just have it go to a couple of waypoints and then come back and do a return to home at the end. Once you know that it works reliably, then you can start to get a little bit more carried away and more sophisticated with the missions that you can want to fly. One of the common gotchas, and I keep forgetting about this, is putting the first waypoint too far away from where you are on the quad. If it's too far away, then the quad will not take off. It'll actually give you a big error. So make sure that the nav waypoint max safe distance settings in the CLI is easily going to allow you to have that first waypoint that far away without hitting that error. And then finally, don't forget when you're setting up the mission, use that kind of altitude little check that we did. And that's a great way to just check that you're not going to be flying into the side of a mountain. Do remember, though, that that isn't going to take into account things like isolated trees, telephone poles, those kind of stuff as well. So always err on the side of caution. But stay tuned, I will be making another one of these specifically around iNav on fixed wings and multi-rotors because there are a couple of differences because obviously you can't do things like point of interest because planes always want to fly forwards. Thank you for watching my video. Check out the playlist and adding Payland 360 to your search terms will help you find my content. If you haven't done so already, please hit the like and subscribe button. It helps a lot. You can support the time I spend here answering questions and helping others by using the links in the video description.